This video is sponsored by the A to Z of Van Life. Hello and welcome back to our A to Z of Van Life uh, series where we answer all of your burning van life and van build questions. And today's question came from our New Year's survey, which is a request to review our own electrical setup. Mm -hmm. We're going to be reviewing our own electrical system as though it's a product well, it is a product that we're recommending, sort of. <laughs> no, not really, because it's an experiment. But never mind. Indeed. We're not professionals in any way. This video has been a very popular request by many of you and we thought that today is an excellent day to do it because our campervan 12 volt electrics workshop is out today this is workshop two of our van conversion boot camp series where we go over all of the basics of how to start a doa van conversion and electrics is a huge part of that and a topic that a lot of us basically get the sweats <laughs> at the beginning just like we did yeah most definitely so the workshop is a safe place for you to come ask your questions resolve any confusions uh, and you may get some new ideas that uh, you know that you may not have, not have thought about before so anyway the link for that workshop and all the other workshops in the bootcamp bundle are down in the description below so if you need it it's down there so this video is mostly for people who are researching their own electrical system and are trying to figure out like what size chargers are good enough or big enough what size batteries they would need and kind of like how that would fit into your usage because we've now spent nearly an entire year living in our van with this setup and we have a pretty good idea through the four seasons mm. of how well it has worked and how well it hasn't. It's all about perspective. It's like what worked for us and why did it work for us? It may work for you or it may not. Yeah. And uh, finding what didn't work is sometimes more helpful than what did. Let's crack the bonnet. So for those who don't know, our electrical system is under our sofa couch here because it's pretty much, we don't have a garage. So this is nearly one of the only spaces that can fit our system. So this is our first electrical setup. Now there are a few little niggles, mostly neatness, um, but it all works. So let me give you a quick tour of our electrical system. So we've got 200 amp hours of rely on lithium batteries. Each cell is 100 amp hours each and they run at 12 volts. We've got a 50 amp red arc DC to DC charger, which allows us to charge from our alternator. We've got 540 watts of solar on the roof, which runs into a Victron 100 slash 50 MPPT. We've got a 2000 watt Renergy pure sine wave inverter on the right. And we also have a basic AC charger, which charges our main batteries from AC power at 30 amps. The rest of the system is just wires, fuses, kill switches, and bus bars, which pretty much connect everything together. As I said, not in the neatest of ways, but it is safe and it does work. With an electrical system, there are kind of three main categories of well, how good is it? You've got functionality, safety, and neatness. <laughs> now, I mean, neatness is obviously how easy everything is to access, how easy is it to change things over, and obviously how neat does it look you know can you trace a wire do you know where things are we can trace our wires but if we were to build it again i would build it a lot neater next time in terms of actually living with the system which is really the the, the best uh, um thing to review um it's been all right um yeah. uh, it's 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 manageable <laughs> I, I should say so a little bit of uh, background if you don't know because i know a lot of you will know this but if you knew then you wouldn't and welcome um, <laughs> welcome hello yeah. um and this is where you're unsubscribed she's <laughs> weird she's weird totally weird but yeah we we've spent nearly an entire year with this setup living full-time in our van and we've been traveling we work full-time on the road as well so everything that we've been doing runs off this electrical system and we've had all four seasons we've had a really hot summer in europe mm. um we're now having a very cold winter mm -hmm. in the uk so we've had the whole spectrum uh, and i think that's given us a pretty good test run of what to expect from this system how well it's worked and obviously as well things that haven't worked out so well yeah we've been experimenting with electric cooking we've been um, you know running the van full time working all lights on heating on <laughs> basically to full capacity and as long as there is a way to recharge the batteries there's been no problem yeah so in terms of what recharge abilities we have we have the alternator we have the solar and we have ac charging the one that we don't use the most is ac charging we've rarely we've never been to a campsite 
and the only reason we plug in is if we're on essentially our parents house back at base and we're not moving at all and we just need to top up the batteries we just plug in and charge so with the ac charger even though we don't use it that often it's only 30 amps it can only charge at 30 amps which even with our 200 amp hour lithium battery bank if we were very very low it takes a long time how long does it actually take so the lowest we've been on is 15 percent. that would be 30 amp hours so it would have to charge 170 amp hours which let me do the maths is 3 6 9 12 15 80 about six hours it takes six to hours. charge up that's not too bad it's not um, too bad <coughs> if we were to do it again i would probably just buy a bigger one because why not 50 amp hour yeah, you can get ones that are 50 or 80. I think Victron do 120. I think that would be a waste of money in our case. We wouldn't use that. No, but a 50 or an 80 would be nice. But as I said, it's our least used charging method. Mm -hmm. So it's not as vital and is easily just swapped out if we did want to get another one. And when it comes to solar, so we have 540 watts of yes. solar. Yeah, so that, that's up on the roof and that is rather a lot of solar for um, most camper vans. Yeah. Um, uh, though, thinking about it, I would like to basically double that because it'll be awesome when there's actually sun. It's in the works. How effective solar charging is really depends on the season and where in the world you are. <laughs> because the latitude of, of uh, your, your location affects uh, the the angle which the, the sun hits your panels like tenfold. During the summer, no problem. There was basically no clouds. The sun was right up top. You get six hours. Ample, ample uh, of, of basically direct sunlight, full capacity, you know, going through the <laughs> roof uh, and the batteries just get recharged and you, you can't physically use the power. Yeah. You're like, I need to use the power. <laughs> We're wasting, wasting this opportunity. Um, um, that, so, that's yeah. a common thing with so, lifers. <laughs> so throughout the summer, the the solar charging was perfectly fine. We could live off solar charging and actually kind of the back end of spring and the beginning of autumn as well mm -hmm. is pretty good. Yeah, when we were in the UK. So we were back in the UK for spring and autumn yeah. and it wasn't until October that basically things went south. Yes, but as soon as it got into November, the solar started becoming not unreliable, just flat out non-existent, non -existent. Uh, just because the sun was, you know, horizontal. Yeah. Um, uh, and yes, you may think, oh, why don't you just tilt the panels? And that's definitely an option. Yeah. It, it would increase our capacity and uh, it, it would um, get us through winter much easier. However, doing a tiltable rig, um, it's not easy and it is work. Um, uh, so we have to like prioritize what is the thing we want to upgrade for this season and the tilting wasn't it or yeah. is not it. Um, Plus you have to remember you can't drive with panels tilted, tilting panels every single time. You have to park in the right location to face the sun, which may not always be the case. So tilting works, but it's not always the best thing to do and yeah. it may not always be possible even if you can tilt your panels. And uh, yes you can tilt the panels manually so they'll go and lift them every time <laughs> but these panels are heavy and they're huge okay yeah. um, and you have to think about it the time you're going to be needing to tilt the panels is in winter the coldest <laughs> time most likely covered in snow which you technically need to clean the panels anyway but uh since it's going to be cold it's going to be the time that you want to go out the least to go and uh, touch cold metal so you're probably not going to use it as much as you think when it's that cold so ideally you need to have it on um, um uh, what is it no gastros the I, I Actuators. actuators yeah uh, uh, actuators um uh, and then that means you have to do the wiring and get the timing right or, or uh, like you know the, the tilt uh, but we have been asked is it actually worth putting solar panels on the roof and i would say absolutely Definitely. yes Definitely. I, I love having the trickle charge the trickle charge helps us so much um and it did basically make the autumn more manageable still because we were getting that extra 10 percent uh, to give us more time exactly. before we have to turn the engine on so yeah. it, it is it is really helpful it's just it's not as effective when it's winter exactly so speaking of turning the engine on our final method of basically charging the batteries is a dc charger which is essentially when you turn the engine on the alternator charges the starter battery and we've connected our starter battery to our ledger batteries with a dc charger and that basically gets the alternator to charge 
our batteries. And I would say that is the most reliable off-grid recharge solution. Yes, it say. is. We've went with a Red Arc 50 amp DC charger, which is quite a large singular DC charger. Red Arc is a big company in Australia and they're very um, like tried and tested. Yes. Um, so they're actually really, really, really good. They use like an ambulances and such. Um, so I would totally rec recommend them. Yeah. Um, uh, and in terms of reliability, I mean, no problem. As we've said, uh, we've now got it wired to a switch so we can turn it on and off from the cab. Mm -hmm. um, but any time that we're driving, if we want to charge the van, just turn it on and it charges up. Another big tip that I would say about the DC charger is the way DC chargers work is it sort of tries to level the um, ledger batteries with the starter battery. Sometimes, especially when it gets cold, it actually doesn't allow for the starter battery to fully charge, which means eventually your battery goes flat. Yeah, so, okay, so your starter <laughs> battery goes flat. And every time we make a small trip to go to the supermarket or to go to screw fix, unfortunately, um, if the DC charger is on for that short five minute journey, the starter battery doesn't have a chance to actually charge back up. Hence why we have the switch and can turn it off. Yeah. So in this cold weather, we can, for very short trips, mm -hmm. just turn it off and allow the starter battery to actually charge. get some charge in there. Um, yeah, and another big change to the system that we did make from the very beginning, which if you do watch the uh, the very first setup, the video is, is right here. So there's a, there are a few changes from that, like the bus bars and we did uh, essentially add another AC charger to the system so we can loop uh, the whole charge uh, back around and get our leisure batteries to charge our starter battery. Because we had last winter, our starter battery, which was basically going flat, uh, it, the capacity had dropped so much that um, it wasn't really recharging properly. So every two days we had a flat battery and we couldn't start the van. Yeah. So when we installed this AC charger, we essentially had the ability to charge a starter battery off grid without getting jumper cables or calling someone, which another tip, a lot of batteries like car batteries can't actually jump start our battery because our starter battery <laughs> is bigger than their battery. And that turned out to be a problem. So we were fudged. Yes. So that's why we essentially installed that loop. And I know that might be hard to kind of imagine what we mean. So we have actually done our electrical schematic uh, for you to get, should you want to have a look at how everything's actually connected. Because when you see it crammed in here, <laughs> it's all basically hair tangles. You, you can't follow a thing. So mm -hmm. um, the electrical schematic is available for you to uh, get and basically find out what the hell we're talking about. Indeed. But my back hurts, you, you carry on. Oh. I just wanted to say one more thing about the um, the DC charger is that if we ever did want to charge the van, but we didn't want to have to drive anywhere, we would literally just turn the van on, just let it idle in a spot, and that also charged our laser batteries. It's not a good idea to do this all the time because that's basically the most strain on the alternator that you can give, especially when you're then pulling an extra 50 amps from the alternator, but uh, it is something that we had to do, especially getting into winter time uh, when we needed to charge our batteries up. I'm going to stop adding notes here. I'm going to leave them for the workshop. So come and join us at the workshop. What was the next section? Inverter. Inverter, right. So yeah, we have a 2000 watt Renogy inverter basically installed down there in the van. Um, as we said, we electric cook a lot. So pretty much all of our electric cooking runs off that inverter. We've got an extension cable that we've plugged into the inverter that runs under the floor down to the back where the kitchen is. That's essentially our AC wiring. We just have an extension lead. We didn't want to have to run AC wires through the walls and things like that. So we just ran an extension cable. It's basically just nice and simple and easy to work with. We just turn the inverter on at our panel and then just plug things in. And if we were to do it again, we would do exactly the same thing, run extension leads, maybe a bit neater again, but still run extension leads because then we can just replace the extension leads. And it's it's just, it, for me, it just feels simpler. Now, in terms of using the 2000 watt inverter, I don't know if it's the inverter or a low voltage cutout on the batteries that's causing this issue, if you will. But if we actually try and use close to 2000 watts, especially if we use more than one device, the inverter shuts down. The breaker doesn't trip, but the inverter just turns off and then turns back on. So I'm not sure what's going on there, whether it's the batteries or the inverter that does that. 
but uh, 2000 watts is more than enough to run what we need to run in the van. So when it comes to the batteries themselves, the Reliant batteries that we have are really, really good. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're amazing. They're very, very good quality battery. The BMS is great and they work. Uh, they're, they're, as, far, as, far, as far as we know, they work just fine. They've handled us dropping them to 15% um, uh, and they seem very, very healthy. Um, uh, so I have no complaints about the batteries. I would totally recommend them. Yeah. Um, uh, the only issue, I guess, especially looking at it now that we have with the batteries, mm -hmm. is that the Reliant ones are quite expensive. When yeah. we were looking for batteries two and a half years ago, um, I was looking in deep into the tech specs to try and find out good quality batteries with very low resistance that can handle high charge and discharge because that essentially shows you that the construction of the battery is very good. I'll go into more detail in a dedicated video about batteries. Mm -hmm. But anyway, when we were looking, the Reliant batteries were one of the only ones on the market that were actually good quality. There are a lot of like unknown kind of Chinese made unknown construction which yeah. I could have gone with but some of the big brands uh, I don't quite remember them like which ones were made where but like uh, uh, Vic the Victron ones and the Renergy ones they're dressed um, you know with the brand but their supplier like where they actually made was also in China so so like if you trace the production line a lot of things were still made in China and assembled in China what you're looking for I think is you want things to be assembled not in China they can be like parts can be produced in China they can be produced anywhere but what you want is the assembly to be done somewhere where there's regulations yes um, uh, so these Reliant ones are USA constructed so they're mm -hmm. the cells are made in China but they're all balanced and constructed in the USA yeah. which made they came with a five-year warranty uh, and, and everything has been running pretty much smoothly with them. So that's yeah. why we chose those ones when we did, yeah. when we were buying them two and a half years ago. There weren't really the options that there are now and um, uh, this video is getting too long so we're going to have to uh, continue this next video where we're going to talk more about our battery capacity and why that is not enough for full-time van life. Right, do we have anything more to say on this review? What, without revealing the batteries? What batteries?